The ideas expressed in the following presentations are those of the speakers and do not necessarily reflect the views of ACI or its committees. ACI web sessions are recorded at ACI conventions or other concrete industry events and will be made available for viewing free of charge for one week. Thereafter, they will be archived on the ACI website or added to ACI's online CEU program depending on their content. You can earn continuing education credits through ACI's online CEU program. Visit www.concrete.org to register. ACI conventions provide an opportunity for networking and for keeping up to date with the latest in concrete technology and practices. The next speaker today is uh, Tim Taylor. He is the president of American, Tech American Concrete Technologies in Fort Worth, Texas, and uh, they are a leader of uh, polished concrete in the southwest of the United States. Well, good afternoon. My name is Tim Taylor, and uh, actually, uh, our company used to be called American Concrete Technologies. I changed it about two years ago to Amory because we, we also do Terrazzo. Uh, Okay, this was originally designed for architects. Uh, I feel like I'm a little bit preaching to the choir here, but uh, uh, if you have any questions, just interrupt me uh, because we, I'm going to try to brush through this if I may. Anyway, our, our, our company travels uh, three states, Texas, Oklahoma, New Mexico, and um, as I already said, we, we, um, we market primarily to architects. Uh, that's, that's how we get our business. Talk a little bit about basics of polished concrete. It's a mechanical process. Uh, we use large grinders. Our grinders weigh 850 pounds. Actually, the small ones weigh 850 pounds. The large ones weigh over 1,100 pounds. I uh, use what's called planetary rotation. So underneath the, the grinders, we have three heads. All three heads rotate in opposite directions, and the entire platen rotates. And we do use industrial diamonds to grind and polish the floor. Uh, we use different tooling for different hardnesses of concrete. Uh, we use uh, uh, tooling for soft concrete, different tooling for normal, and we have very special tooling for, for hard concrete. It's a very laborious process. It takes up to nine steps to polish concrete. We normally start with 40 grit uh, tooling, and then we, wake, we work our way up through progressive steps. We go from 40 grit to 80 grit, 80 to 150, 150 to 300, then 400, 800, 1,500, 3,000. So we don't really take off very much, somewhere between a 32nd and a 16th of an inch. After the, uh, after the second step, we actually put a densifier on the floor, which helps to, uh, which helps to uh, dust proof the concrete. There's two systems. There's a wet system and a dry system. We use a dry system. Uh, and the reason for that is that, that, that we find that when you have a wet system, you have to you collect the uh, slurry. In that slurry, you have to environmentally dispose of, where in the dry system, we create dust. We collect that dust using vacuums, and we can easily dispose of that dust. One of the problems we have with our, with our machines is that we can't get all the way up to an edge or a wall. So that last two to three inches, uh, we have to hand grind. So we prefer the walls not be there, so we get in as early as we can. Uh, so we use angle grinders to, to help grind that to last two to three inches. Another option would be for us to paint up against the walls. We don't re require chemicals to polish concrete. Uh, it's a mechanical process. Um, so it's the reason it's shiny is because it's very smooth and it's reflecting the light. Uh, often as we continue to grind down into the concrete, uh, we expose the aggregate. Um, then the air surface is actually the aggregate rather than the cement that's on top. This project is actually one we did in San Antonio. It's a community college there. And you can see how flat and how reflective the concrete is. We do use chemicals, though. We do, as I mentioned, we use a densifier to help uh, dust proof and harden the floor. Various types, sodium uh, silicates are probably the most common, uh, lithium silicates, potassium, and magnesium sil silicates as well. No VOCs on this. Uh, depending on the type of concrete, it does help harden some, depending on how soft it is in the beginning. As you probably know, concrete's porous, uh, so it stains pretty readily. Uh, at the very end of the, of the process, we actually put a polish guard on there uh, to help increase the chemical and stain resistance. Uh, so what, what's going to happen in this case, it's not a, a sealer per se, 
we call it a sealant. It's chemically reacting with the concrete. It's going to repel uh, stains like coffee, uh, ketchup, mustard, vinegar, things like that. This is a this is a photograph I took in Albuquerque. Uh, one of the managers of this uh, industrial supply company actually came and poured coffee on the floor. Came, got me about four hours, and said, "Let me see you get this up." We actually took a damp cloth and just wiped it up. So what we do is we come at the very end of the project. We actually, after the construction process, we actually take a high-speed burnisher, buff the floor, apply the, 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 the polish guard, and rebuff the floor. At that point in time, it's really ready for the, for the owner to move in. For a number of cost benefits of polishing concrete, I usually get two questions uh, anytime I talk to, especially an architect. The first is, is it slippery? And the answer is no. We had our system tested by the National Force Safety Institute, which is an organization that promotes floor safety. And they uh, calculated using a BOT 3000 that polished concrete rates is high traction. So again, and this is a wet test. So um, it has a static coefficient reading of, of, of above a 0.6. OSHA and ADA, uh, ADA has a recommendation of um, 0.6 or higher. OSHA has a 0.5, and this exceeds both of those. Any questions so far, by the way? Yes, sir. The polish bar, um, is that a sodium silicate or something in that direction? Uh, it's, it's, it, it, in some, it, it, part of it is, yes. There's some other chemicals in it as well, but part of it is either sodium silicate or lithium or what would, another chemical like that that's going to chemically react with the concrete. The other question I get is, how much is it? And that really depends on the size of the project. Uh, how much grinding we do, uh, complexity of it, and things like that. The prices we're normally seeing somewhere between $2 and $5 a square foot. Uh, we've actually re been redoing our, our, we've actually gotten more efficient, tooling's gotten better, and we're actually seeing some projects actually below $2. The real beauty of polished concrete is really long-term maintenance. So we're finding that uh, the people that care about long-term maintenance are starting to use a lot of polished concrete. Uh, we've got, right now I've got Crew heading to New Mexico. We've got three schools we're going to be doing in New Mexico. Uh, today I've got crews working on a, a private school in Midland, a uh, community center in Orange, Texas. And the real reason for this is long-term long -term maintenance. It's very easy to maintain. I was actually asked by the Dallas Independent School District to give them a break-even point between polished concrete and BCT using the same maintenance program that they have with the exception of, of having to strip and re-wax the floor. The breaking point was a year and a half. So in a year and a half, polished concrete is cheaper than BCT. So what we do, the recommendation is that you, depending on how much traffic is on the floor, come in about every, uh, on high traffic floors, three to five years, take a high speed burnisher using these uh, main, diamond coated maintenance pads, just rebuff the floor. On a low traffic floor, probably five to seven years. So again, this could be done. These things are rated at 20,000 square feet per hour. So you can actually you know, rebuff an entire floor in just a matter of a few hours. So when you consider maintenance, a polished concrete really is uh, very, very inexpensive. Uh, these are some flooring options uh, that we compare to polished concrete. Uh, 10,000 square feet at $3.25 a square foot. The average cost per year is about $0.32 cents compared to an epoxy trazo at more than double that price at $0.77. Cents. The BCT is coming in at five times the price of polished concrete at $1.62. So if it's done properly, it's going to be a lot more expensive, expensive to maintain. So the question is, when to come in during the construction process? The question was asked, do we have to wait 30, 30 days? And actually, we don't. Um, we can actually come in as early as five days after the concrete's been placed. Uh, we, we've been told in our industry that 28 days is, is the golden rule. Uh, we started doing it earlier and earlier and earlier. In, in five to seven days, it's really about the, about the earliest we come in. Four days, it's still a little green. Um, but we've done, we did a whole subdivision in Austin uh, where they pour the concrete, and five days later, we're in there polishing and grinding it. We do recommend that the, the concrete be um, uh, protected after we polish it. There's a number of things you can do. Uh, there's cardboard. Uh, well, there's actually a new peelable product that you can actually put on, put it on as a liquid, and peel it off later. Uh, this helps protect it during the construction process because we don't put this polish guard on until the very end. One of the problems with existing concrete is um, that there may be holes in the floor. Sometimes when you move walls and things like that, there, there's, there's falls in the floor where those, 
the studs have been shot down. Uh, you can actually go in there. We can actually color blend those those patches to the floor. Again, when we finish, it still looks like a patch, but it's going to be it's going to be color color matched. We don't really require a special mix design. Anything 3,000 psi or over will work. Uh, you can use flash or the pause lines in the mix. Uh, we do care about how it's cured. We want it to be cured properly. Um, a wet cure is by far the best cure that we can we can use. Also, a dissipating curing compound. The other thing we care about is floor flatness. We're going to try to flatten the floor, uh, but we prefer that it be very flat in the beginning. Uh, we like an FF number, floor flatness number of about 50, which is about an eighth and 10 feet. Um, we don't always get that, so it creates more of a burden for us. A couple of ways to do that. The best way to get a flat floor is using a laser screed. Uh, another way to get that is to use a float pan on the bottom of a power trial. Uh, but so this is very important to us. As you know, concrete cracks, the question is where. You try to tell it where, it doesn't always obey, obey that. So um, when you have a crack in the floor, what do we do about that? And we actually have a system that we, that we use for that. It makes a pour of, of liquid on the floor, it's a latex material, blends with the dust from the concrete. Uh, the machine actually, we do this early in the process, the machine actually pushes that grout into the cracks. Cementitious, as we polish up the floor, that crack is polished as, as well. So it ends up looking like a vein in the floor rather than a, an ugly crack. We can also vary the sheen. Uh, the high sheen we go to is 3,000 grit, which is a full gloss. We can also cut that back to 1,500, which would be like a semi-gloss, or an 800 grit would be like a satin finish. So we can, we, we find that most people want a, a glossy finish uh, because gloss represents clean, so they want it to look clean. But sometimes people want it to, for cost reasons, maybe cut it back a little bit. We can also vary the amount of uh, aggregate that we expose. Most people think concrete's gray, and actually concrete's not gray. Cement's gray. There's other colors in the concrete that, that, that as we start to grind, the concrete starts to expose. The first thing you see when you start to expose, when you start to grind concrete, is you start to see the sand that's in the concrete. So as you continue to grind down, you're going to see more and more of the aggregate, creating a very trazzle-like effect. So the real difference between this and this is really how much we've been grinding the concrete. Now this is a pea gravel, but I actually know there's aggregate in all concrete, so we continue to grind down, we're going to see whatever the natural aggregate that's in that concrete. I think the oldest project we've ever done was a, was a um, facility in, in Amarillo, 100-year-old building, and aggregate's probably never been exposed as we ground down heavily on that floor. Uh, we expose aggregate, making a very trazzle-like effect. A lot of times people want color in concrete, so obviously the best way to put color in concrete is to put it in as an integral color, to put the, the, the mix into the, into the truck. Uh, so we can add many, many colors. Um, the other way to do it would be actually to put a dye in the concrete. So this can be done at any time. Obviously, an integral color has got to be done in the truck as a new pour, whereas uh, we can dye the floor at any time. This is actually a... a, a uh, wine and beer a spirit shop in, in Houston. Uh, notice that it's got lots of different colors in the floor, very vibrant colors. This is different from an acid stain. A lot of times people think that uh, this is an acid stain. Actually, these are dyes and not acid stains. Acid stains are chemically reacting with the concrete. This is literally dyeing concrete. So we put this on at the 400 grit level as we're grinding the floor, apply the dye, and then polish it on up to 3,000 grit and then we lock the color in using the polish guard. We can also uh, broadcast decorative aggregates uh, in the wet concrete, so you can broadcast pretty much anything you like. Um, granite, marble, glass, metal chips, things like that. Um, so when you, when you, when you full float it in, uh, it looks like normal concrete is. We put a grinder on it and start to expose that, uh, that, that aggregate, it starts to create a more terrazzo-like effect. A lot of times people uh, still think that shiny is slippery, so there, a lot of times they want something more decorative outside, so we can also do a hone finish, which is just a rough grind of concrete that, that's very suited for exterior, exterior applications. There are a number of advantages of polished concrete. Uh, ease of maintenance, it's very easy to maintain, you don't need anything special to, to maintain it. Uh, just uh, mop it, uh, burnish it every now and then. It will also improve, improve the reflectivity and ambient lighting. It's also very cost-effective when you consider long-term maintenance. 
We can always improve the conditions of old floors. I, I think my crew is like actually old floors better because the expectations are a little bit different. You take an old floor that looks battered and beat up and you start to grind that off, expose that aggregate. Uh, people are always overwhelmed. Sometimes with new concrete, they have a little bit different expectation. We can also eliminate the dusting and effervescence that you get with, often with concrete. On industrial facilities, we can also reduce the tire wear since it's very smooth. We can operate around other, other trades. There's no um, interruption of other trades as long as they're give us some floor. But a lot of times people want to be on the floor as well, like ladders and lifts like that. But uh, we, we try to cooperate with other trades. We can always extend the life cycle of a floor. Uh, people talk about 40-year floors. This is really could be more like a 100-year floor. Uh, it's going to last really as, 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 as long as that building is going to be there. So it, it's not only easier to maintain, requires less maintenance. We can also make the floor very beautiful. We can make it decorative. And really one of my favorites is honesty materials. We're not trying to make the concrete look like something it's not. We're, when we finish, it's, 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 I mean, when we start as concrete and when we finish, it's still concrete. So we're not trying to make it look like bricks or stone or anything else. It's also a very sustainable product. Um, it's, it's intrinsically green. We didn't really set out to make it green. It just happens to be green. So we're, we find ourselves in a lot of, on a lot of lead projects. Uh, I used to tell people I don't think I've ever been on a platinum lead project. And actually, I found out that we did a project for NASA down in, uh, in Houston. It was a platinum project. So you don't see many of those, but we do see, see those. One of the probably more important things about sustainability for, for polished concrete is the fact that we're actually dematerializing the project. That's one less material we bring to the job site. Job site. Unfortunately, the US GBC doesn't give you points for not bringing something to the job site. So you don't, you're not awarded points for this, but if you really care about sustainability, this is probably the most important point. Uh, we can also, um, all the chemicals that we use are, are either no VOCs or low VOCs, so we're not contaminating the atmosphere. Uh, we can also help optimize energy performance. You can actually use the, the thermal mass of concrete to help reduce the, uh, the energy requirements on the, on, on the concrete. We find that that's really not calculated in very often, but it can be calculated in. We also reflect available light. Uh, we can also reuse old slabs. Uh, with these photographs here are from a project that we did in Albuquerque. Uh, it was a raised aggregate floor. We came in, uh, ground it flush, and polished it. So instead of just ripping it out or, or, doing, or putting something on top, top of it, we just polished it. Yes, sir? With old concrete, uh, so many facilities aren't going to work. Does the physical facilities work? Or uh, we actually use lithium. Uh, but, but this one had to have sealer. We ground all that off. And then uh, we actually do put a densifier. We densify this like we would densify a regular floor. We use lithium silicates. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. So that concludes the program. Do we have any other questions? Got to rush through this. And I apologize for that. Yes, sir. Yes, sir. I was wondering, um, the most service you talk about relative to the Have you ever done on uh, if we did that, it would have to be done by hand. Um, um, and they're not all perfectly flat. There's some pretty rough that, that we, we, and then we're, we're sort of forced to try to flatten that floor. Okay, you mentioned how do we specify it? Correct. Uh, there's, a, there's actually a hardness test that we can use, a Morse hardness test, where it's a scratch test. But what we find is our guys are exp experienced enough that when they get on the floor, they can pretty much look at the floor and tell how hard it is. I mean, rel in a relative sense. But what they, what they also do is they've got different tooling. So they'll start with a, with a f tool that they think is going to work on that floor. And from there, depending on how, how easy it is to grind, they'll change up the tooling because uh, if it's easy to grind, uh, sometimes that'll, that'll eat up the tools very quickly. So, so but, but they're really they're doing two things. One is experience, and the other is yeah, trial and error. Correct. Correct. Yeah, but well, there, there, there's also a Swiss, a Swiss hammer. We've talked about using a Swiss hammer. 
because that's going to measure the hardness of the surface, which the PSI might be something completely different. In the, well, but it's also going to measure the hardness of that of the surface. At least that's, that's and that's all I care about is hardness of surface. Right, 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 right. Any other questions? By the way, Leo helped me make about half these samples that we that we have here. So, Leo, fill in. All right, any other questions? Okay, appreciate it. Thank you. <laughs>